Hey everybody, welcome to Home Recording Made Easy in Mix Tip Tuesday, where every Tuesday I show you a new mixing tip to help you make more professional sounding mixes in your home studio. Before we get to this week's tip, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Make sure you hit that notification bell and also stick around to the end of the video because at the end of the video, I have something I wanna give you absolutely free that's really gonna help you with your mixing training. So be sure to stick around. Everybody. Okay, in this week's Mix Tip Tuesday video, we are gonna talk about um, something that I think is really cool, and we're gonna talk about adding tape saturation to your mix is kind of one of the first plugins that I use in a mix to kind of give the mix some an overall glue and again to give it a nice foundation to be before we start using EQ and compression on all our individual tracks. So one of the questions that I get asked a lot from a lot of newbie mixers once they get used to using their stock plugins and they want to jump into third party plugins but maybe they're on a budget and they're not sure what to buy. I'll get a lot of emails asking something like if I'm gonna get some third party plugins, which ones um, in order of importance would you recommend first? I don't have a lot of money, I don't have a big budget, what would you recommend? So there's uh, two plugins I always recommend. The first thing I say is get yourself a really good reverb and or delay. Usually the stock reverbs and delays and most DAWs are not very good. That's the first thing I would tell you. And then the second plugin I've always recommend is a good tape machine plugin. Now, which one you use, there's a million of them on the market. I have a bunch of YouTube videos um, demonstrating different ones by different manufacturers. They all sound good. It's really personal preference um, on which one you like, but I always say get a good tape machine plugin. So um, the one we're going to use this time around is we're going to use the one that you've probably seen me use before in any of my mixing products or YouTube. If you've been following me for a while, this is the Slate Digital Virtual Tape Machines. But once again, you can use any one. And the concept is this. We're going to put this as, as our first main plugin on all our individual tracks, including our master bus. And this one happens to be on the master bus. Um, and we're setting it to this particular tape machine plugin has two tape machine types modeled in one plugin. The six 16 track tape machine which goes on all the individual tracks and then the and then the two inch or the, the half inch two track tape machine which is what this is on right now that goes on the master bus I'm setting the master bus to 30 inch or excuse me to 15 inches per second the slower the tape runs uh, the more compression the more glue the more color you're going to kind of get on your audio signal and we got this on the master bus and then you can see across all our individual tracks outside of our phase correction tool that we did a few mix tip Tuesdays uh, earlier, we have our tape machine. Here's the kick drum, for example, and on, on all the individual tracks, I'm running it at 30 ips per second to speed up the tape a little bit. It's a little bit more transparent sounding, not as compressed sounding, but again, it's individual uh, preference on what you like. And then I have it set on the 16 track mode for this particular plugin, okay? So again, you can use any tape machine plugin, but this is one that I use a lot and I really like it. So basically what I do is I put it on all the individual tracks. I go through each individual track. I solo it up and I listen to it. So let's do the kick drum as an example. Okay, here's our tape machine uh, plug-in. And I just try to push the input a little bit. So we're hitting the tape, getting close to the zero dB mark here. You want to make sure that when you're running uh, your audio through these analog style plugins, and in particular a tape machine, that you're not pinning it and actually, you know, crushing the needle and distorting it, unless that's the kind of specific sound you're going for, but not in this particular case. But you also don't want to be too conservative. You do want to hit it with a nice, healthy amount of signal to get the most out of these kinds of plugins. And if you want to learn more about all these analog style plugin uh, emulation plugins, I have an, a, an amazing um, course on homerecordingmadeeasy.com called uh, Mixing with Analog Style plugins made easy. Links will be in the description box below. You can go check that out um, and that will uh, really dive down deep into the whole concept of about these types of plugin emulations of this old uh, hardware that is now in plugin format and how to use them in the most effective way. And I really dive down deep into that. So that's a great course for you to check out. But getting back to this, we want to hit this, you know, we're not pinning the needle, but we're not, you know, we're hitting it pretty healthy. And as I'm turning up the input here, the output is automatically linked and turning it down, so we're level matching the plugin. Okay, and I do this on every I do do this on every individual track. Solo up the sub kick mic. Same thing, and I go and I adjust the inputs and the outputs for each individual track. Okay, and I've already done this off camera on all of the tracks. 
Okay. Now, what I want to what I want you to hear is what the accumulative effect of all these tape machine plugins will do to this mix. Now, outside of this tape machine, the only plugins that we're using on the drums are using Audible Line to do some phase correction, which we talked about a few Mix Tip Tuesday episodes earlier. I'll link everything in the description box below if you have not seen Mix Tip Tuesday and this is your first episode look in the description box below. Um, and the only other plugins that we have on this is on our buses, we have some EQ and compression. Again, part of another Mix Tip Tuesday episode where we did a top-down mixing approach. I explained top-down mixing and what that is. Links will be below. Um, and that's the only other plugins. All the individual tracks don't have any other plugins except for the tape machines. Okay, so I wanna, first I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna shut all the tape machines off by highlighting the first track, holding my shift key highlighting the last track, and I'm gonna turn off all the tape machines. By, so by clicking on this power button here, you can see that all of the plugins, the second slot has all been turned off. The first slot is still on, and I have the second slot turned off, which is all the virtual tape machine plugins, and only the virtual tape machine plugins. All the other plugins are in play. The last tape machine plugin is here on the master bus. I'll turn that off as well, right here on the master bus. Everything else is in play. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play back part of this mix, and I'm going to turn on all these tape machines. You can just hear what it does, okay? Make sure you have good headphones and or listening on good studio monitors. You're listening to us on an iPhone or some crappy earbuds. They're not going to hear the effect as much. But here is what tape, just running the signal through the tape, hitting it at a you know fairly you know conservative level without pinning it. Here's what color and um, vibe and glue, if you will, you could do to our mix. Here we go. Without the tape machine, then I'll turn them all on. Deep inside our heart. Let this love be unconditional Empower your brother to be better We're rising up Cause we've had enough Of the hate that divides us We're standing up Not giving up Hold each other Okay, so hopefully you can hear the difference there. Again, you hear that little pop when I turn them on, a little glitch in the audio. That's normal when I'm trying to turn on 30 plugins all at the same time. Um, but just so to give you a little insight of what you should be listening for, listen to the low end of the kit drum, how the tape adds a little more, a lot more punch. We also get a lot more, a uh, little bit more clarity on the upper mid range, and also it kind of rounds off the top end, and it kind of, uh, it kind of makes sure that we don't have any harshness in this mix. And it kind of rounds off the top end and makes it kind of smooth sounding, and that's what tape's going to do for us. Tape is going to act in this case like a compressor. Tape is one form of compression where it's not only going to add the uh, the analog circuitry to the actual tape machine that was modeled and it's gonna add some of that harmonic distortion and that color, but it's also gonna compress the signal a little bit. It's gonna think, make things sound a little more thick, a little more punchy, with a little bit more open clarity on the top end that's nice and smooth, okay? So again, keep your eye on the power button. When I turn them off, the plugins are disengaged. When I light them up, they're enabled. We'll start with them off and then I'll turn them on. And again, if you hear a little pop in the audio, that's just all the plugins coming on. I will try to play back a good 30, 40 seconds before I turn on so you can really hear the difference. So here, we're gonna start without, without the tape machine. Promote the passion deep inside our heart. Let this love be unconditional. Empower your brother. So hopefully you heard the difference here. What a difference it really makes. It really does make the mix come alive and it glues everything together. And it's a nice, uh, simple way to just get the mix sounding better very, very quickly. And again, regardless of the tape machine plugging you're using, you're gonna have the same kind of effect. They'll all sound a little different from each other. There's a million of them on the market. This one happens to be the Slate Digital Virtual Tape Machines, which I really like. Now this one is on the just the master bus. Now if we were just to turn the one on the master bus on and off, leaving all the other ones in play, you're still gonna hear a little bit of an effect. Even if you just dropped it on the master bus without putting it across all your individual track tracks, 
it'll make a difference. So let's listen to the difference here. Get inside us, not breaking up. Watch together as one. Can't say it enough. I'm stuck together in love. Just listen to the punch of the kick drum, okay? That all by itself, this one plug-in on the master bus adds some thump to that kick drum. Listen to it. I'm going to start with it off and I'm going to bring it in. Just try to focus in on the kick drum. Right, and it also again opens up that upper mids really, really nicely. Again, this is just one plug-in. Now, one of the uh, problems that some people might have, depending on the specs of your computer, and I want you to keep this in mind, that in this particular mix, I have what 35 tracks plus the master bus 36. So I have 36 instances of the virtual tape machine across all the tracks. Now. If you have a slower computer, something doesn't have a lot of RAM in it with a slower processor, and you try to put 30 or 40 tape machines across all your tracks, your computer may not be able to handle that. And I talk a lot about that in other videos on the YouTube channel, talking about computer specs, and you can search my archive for that. So one way to get around that, if that happens to be one of your problems, is you can just put this on the master bus, or you can just put it on your buses. Okay, if you, if you route all your groupings of instruments down to a busing system, which I talked about in last week's Mix Tip Tuesday where we did our top-down mixing, if you just put those tape machines on your buses, where only, you only have to put maybe five or six of them in your session as opposed to 35 of them, that effect will help as well. Okay, but if you can put them across all your individual tracks, that's the most preferred way. You're going to get the most color and the most benefit out of it, but if you can't do that, do the buses. Um, if you can't do that because your computer's really having a hard time, just do it on the master bus. You heard what a difference it makes. It makes a great difference. So check out tape saturation as your first plug-in. Before you start getting into individual tracks and doing EQ and compression, so on and so forth, I like to put this as my first plug-in after my phase correction on my drums. I like to put this as my first plug-in to kind of, again, give me a nice solid foundation and kind of glue things together right after I'm done doing my static mix, which again is another Mix Tip Tuesday episode. Links will be in the description box below. So I hope you found this video helpful on tape saturation. Again, if you're getting into third-party plugins for the first time, after you get yourself a really good reverb and a really good delay, if you don't already have one, check out a tape machine plugin. I think you'll really like it. It makes a world of difference. It's super easy to use. You don't need to overthink it and it just makes things sound better. Now, I said I was gonna give you guys a free gift. I'm gonna give you a couple of things here just for sticking around and watching the end of, end of this video. Thank you so much. So the first thing I want you to do is click the link in the description box below. Go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. I'm gonna give you five free mixing training courses. So you could take all of these Mix Tip Tuesday uh, episodes and all the tips I'm giving you, and you can apply them right away to a project. I'm going to give you five of those, five free courses worth about $210. Just go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com, click on the orange button right on the home page. You'll get those, uh, you'll get an email notification, and you'll have those five free courses at your disposal that you can use these Mix Tip Tuesday tips on. Then I also want you to look below that in the description box below, and I'm going to give you a coupon code. I'm going to give you 25% off any one of my training courses on homerecordingmadeeasy.com. The uh, coupon code is YouTube25. That's YouTube25. Use that at checkout. Take another 25% off any one of my training courses. So thank you so much for watching this entire video. I hope those free courses and that coupon code will help you get jump started. Um, and also, if you want to learn the craft of mixing in a very non-technical way where we really dive down deep into the craft of mixing. Also check out mixingmadeeasy.net. Again, all the links will be in the description box below. And also leave me comments below and let me know what you think about using tape and what kind of tape machine plugins you may be using if you already have some in your arsenal. Which ones do you like? How do you use them? Do you use them differently than the way I'm using them? I'd love to know. Leave comments below. And until next week's Mick Tip Tuesday video, I've been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next week. Take care.